Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So what I think we are going to do this time, and by think I mean what we're definitely 100% going to do this time, is we are going to make some changes to our game class and our enemy class, and then a couple quick fixes to help us along in our wave and wave manager classes, all for the purpose of helping us get multiple different like kinds of enemies per wave. Um, or even multiple kinds of enemies through different waves. So basically what I'm trying to say is right now we only have one kind of enemy in the game, which is uh, if you're using the same texture as I am. I know a lot of you aren't, which is cool too. Uh, but you probably only have one type of enemy in the game right now. Uh, even if you've gone ahead and gotten multiple types of enemies, this might be worth watching because you might end up deciding to change your program to kind of go the same way that we're doing ours because it's a pretty simple... Um, way to get different kinds of enemies in our game. So let's go ahead and get started then. Going to close the game out and we are going to go to our enemy class. And what we're going to do is make a new constructor for our enemy class. Uh, right now we ask for a lot of stuff. We ask for a texture, start tile, grid, width, height, speed, and health. We don't really need all that stuff to be honest. Uh, if we're going to make a bunch of different enemies, I think there might be a better way that we can go about doing this. And that is by making a class, pretty much what we're doing for the towers. Um, but even simpler, in a sense, because we uh, don't need to make enemy an abstract class, and we don't need to override methods for the enemy, likely. So, oh, wind's picking up a little bit. Hopefully you can't hear that. Maybe you can hear this annoying like wind chime thing out my window, I don't know what that is. Anyways, we are going to make a new class for our enemy. So we'll go to new class and to stay organized. Okay, I can hear this. I don't know if you can, it's annoying me. I'm gonna close this window real quick. It is currently 101 degrees where I live. So I hope you guys appreciate me closing the window and turning off the fan to record this. So we are going to name this enemy alien now you don't need to call yours that obviously but it's probably best practice to start with enemy so we can keep it all organized in our project explorer over here package explorer enemy alien hit finish and let's go to our enemy class now and make that new constructor i was talking about so to do that right above our old constructor we're just going to say public enemy and what we're doing here is we're making a constructor that we can call easily that will kind of just have a bunch of default values and then we can choose to change what we want to change. So we'll give it a default texture and speed and health and width and height, definitely. Um, so all we really need is a start tile and a grid for it to navigate. Um, but instead of putting the start tile, in case we don't have access to the... I guess we would have access to it. Oh well, let's do this. Int tile x, int tile y, and tile grid grid all right and this is going to be our super easy default constructor here we'll probably get rid of the other one eventually because we want to move all towards using this one simple constructor uh, but we'll keep it there for now so we'll say this dot texture equals quick load um what did we have this one as enemy floating one that's what mine is Enemy floating one. So you can kind of see here before we had this subtexture equals texture, and we were passing in this quick load enemy floating one when we made the enemy. Now we're just doing it inside of the enemy class, so it'll save us typing um, overall when we make new enemies. After that is the background, so we can actually go ahead and just copy these three things right here for the health bar textures. Then it is start tile, so this dot start tile equals grid dot get tile at our tile x and our oops tile y after start tile we have x and y we can actually just copy that let's copy all the way up to here um, so that will be right that'll be right this dot width equals we'll say tile size which is set as a static final 
value in our artist class. This dot speed will give it a default value of say 50, easy to remember. This dot health will also say 50, and then start health and hidden health are based on that, so that's fine. Um, grid first alive. This is all like some stuff we don't need to change. I can still hear that weird noise in the outside. Um, so let's copy and paste all this stuff as well from this dot grid all the way to populate checkpoint list. And we will put that in here as well. Okay, so basically what we've done is we've just taken out the custom texture, custom speed, custom health, custom width and height, and give it default values. So now when we make a new enemy, we just need a X and Y coordinate to spawn in and a tile grid to navigate. So let's go back to our enemy alien class. And what we're going to do here is similar to what we did for our towers. We're just going to say extends enemy, enemy. And um, again, that gives us access to everything inside the enemy class, because every time we make a different enemy, we don't want to have to copy and paste all of this code. That's just not efficient at all or fun. So by extending it, we pretty much get access to all of these variables and all of these methods, and we can add our own stuff to it as well. So enemy alien extends enemy, we'll have an error here because when you extend something, it wants you to create it using a constructor in that class. So if you uh, hover over it, we have our two constructors there, the old one right there and our newer smaller one right here. So we'll use the newer one and that is already all set up and ready to go. So in fact, if we go in our game class here and right here on my line 25 where we make a we initialize the wave manager. Let me comment that out by putting a slash asterisk before it and then asterisk slash after it. And here's how our new wave manager is gonna look. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> God bless me. Okay. Wave manager equals new wave manager. And we had new enemy right there. So we'll say new enemy. Now this would work, but uh, we're going to say new enemy alien because we want to try out our new class here. It wants a tile X and a tile Y. For me, that's two zero. So you're going to want to put it wherever your maze starts. Mine starts in the like top left corner, two tiles in. Um, so I'm going to put two zero. And then it wants a grid after that. Grid? I think that's what's called here. Yeah. And then the wave manager also wants the time between the enemies and the amount of enemies per wave, so we'll just say three, three. Okay, so no errors there. So you can see at least immediately that we can use enemy alien kind of interchangeably wherever we use enemy, because it knows that anything it wants to do with an enemy, it can also do with an enemy alien. We're just extending the uh, enemy class there. So let's try running it. And ta-da, looks exactly the same, but now what we can do is because basically enemy alien right now is using all of our default enemy values. It's like pretty much just the most average normal enemy we can get. But if we want to differentiate our enemies and make them look different from each other, all you do is you go into these new classes you make, you extend the enemy. And um, in fact, I'll just, uh, I'll make a, a new one right now that we, we can have both. So I'll say new class enemy UFO. And this is how fast it is to make a new enemy for our game. We just say extends enemy. We get this handy dandy little quick fix to import that. And now if we want to make it different, like so we want to look different, we can just say this dot set texture. And then we can put in a texture. So I'll quick load UFO 64 is the name of my texture that I gave you guys a while ago. Um, and then we'll need to import quick load here. And that's all we need to do. So import static helpers.artist.quick load. There we go, no errors. So if we want to start spawning these enemy UFOs now, um, we just change it from enemy alien to enemy UFO in the game class. And we can go ahead and run that. And now we have enemy UFOs. So we have two different kinds of enemies here enemy UFO enemy alien. And that's how easy it is to make new different kinds of enemies. Um, if you want to differentiate them further, just like setting the texture, you can say other stuff too, like this dot set speed. Um, we can make the UFOs like faster than the enemy aliens. 
and uh, that's pretty much all you need to do to change the enemies around here. If you want to add some kind of new variable to change, you do that in the enemy class, such as, I don't know, uh, whatever else we might add in the future other than health or speed to differentiate them. Um, yeah, so I guess the last thing I want to do in this video before we sign off here is I want to, now that we have an easy way to make new enemies and different kinds of enemies, I want to start setting up our game to be able to handle different kinds of enemies in one uh, game, one round. Because right now, when we want a different enemy, we need to go to the game class and actually change the kind of enemy we had before. So the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to just kind of make an array that contains all of our enemy types and just to pass the array to the wave manager. And then we can decide at that point if we want just you know random types of enemies or we want a specific enemy per wave or if we want to plan out every wave, that's kind of up to you. But we'll do that together as well. Uh, for right now, let's go to the wave class. And it all starts right here. So enemy, enemy type, we want to change that. Um, to an array of enemies called enemy types. So we'll add an S there, S there, S there, make that an array. And go down here. And everywhere it says enemy type, we just want to change that to the first element of the enemy type array. Make sure to add an S after the E in type. So it's enemy types array. So boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. All right. Um, so that was the first step. And then Wave Manager obviously has an error now because you can't make a wave with an enemy type anymore. Instead, we need to say enemy, um, enemy types equals new enemy of uh, size two, I guess. And then we can just pass enemy types, and that'll work. Uh, now, if you run the game right now, you'll get an error. It'll crash because this array is empty. What is outside my window? Um, so let's uh, go ahead and fill this up real quick. So enemy types at zero, whoops, equals new enemy alien at two, zero. Oh, do we have a grid in here? No, so we we pass it in here. Okay, uh, so let's go up to the, the wave manager constructor here. We need to change it here as well from enemy type to enemy types as an array. Enemy types, enemy types, enemy types. There we go. Um, and then now we don't need to create this here. What we can do, in fact, is just leave that like that. So we pass enemy types to the in the new wave method there. And then back in the game class is where everything really starts here. Um, so we'll go ahead and make a new private array of enemies called enemy types in the game class. And then we'll fill that array right after we make the grid. So we can erase this line. This is the old way of doing the wave manager with the old enemy constructor. And instead we will say enemy types equals new enemy of size two, because I have two different kinds of enemies right now. Enemy types at zero equals a new enemy alien at two zero on the grid. And enemy types one equals new enemy UFO at two zero on the grid. Um, so again, you can see that we can use enemy alien and enemy UFO in an array of type enemy because they're, they're all the same thing. They're interchangeable, which is really great for us. Uh, wave manager equals new wave manager. And instead of passing this new enemy here, let's just go ahead and pass enemy types at one or zero, whichever you prefer. Um, we do have an error here now. What's the error? Oh, right, they want all of our stuff. Silly me, okay. So instead of passing a specific kind, we just pass the entire array. Okay, uh, so we just changed a bunch of stuff, and I'm not sure if we made a simple mistake here or not, so let's go ahead and try running this and see what happens. Cool, it worked. Um, 
it's doing the first element of the array, which is enemy alien for me. But uh, we will change it in the future so that it either does random elements in the array, meaning random enemies, or different enemy types per wave, so on and so forth. But that is all we're going to do for this video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer.